Books of Enderal, Euro's Diary, First Letter My name is Euro Sunwind, and this is my first life letter. Last night, Sira and I had a lengthy talk about her plans for the future. At one point, Sira noticed that a lot of visionaries tend to become cynical, the reason being they lose sight of their goals. These documentations shall record my aspirations. In moments of weakness, I want to read these to remind myself of what is dear to me. Well, this is the first one. Just yesterday, the keeper of the order from Ark visited the village, and if that weren't enough, he also detected some magic inside of me. Me, an arcanist? It's difficult to express my feelings with words. I feel like all my hard work is finally paying off. Interestingly, this arouses a particular somewhat morbid thought. Maybe it is, in some sad way, even good that my mother passed away. Why? Because it opened my eyes. Now I don't feel anything other than a lack of understanding, and, yes, even anger, towards the simpletons of the village, both the children and the adults. Day after day, it's always the same. They get up, work, and let themselves be amused by the bards in the evening. Can't they see what's happening in the world? Everything they pass on, should it really be just a brief inscription on a stone? Sira is different. She understands me. She shares my dream. And if Master Igres accepts her as an apprentice, we could continue to be close in the novitiate as we are right now. Second letter. Fifteen years have passed, and a lot of my wishes have come true. Sira and I are now living together, but with a craftsman instead of in the temple quarters. It has been five years since I completed the Holy Trial. Despite what I originally planned, I've decided against the military path and will be a school teacher instead. Why? Because I believe that I can reach a lot more people by sharing my vision with the young, rather than fighting in wars. Such things might sometimes be necessary, but they stand for everything that I stand against. Beyond that, the Truchessa has recently adopted the food bank bill which Sira and I developed together. Twice a year, rich Andralians are obliged to contribute a handful of pennies into a chest, which the poorest in the Undercity are brought with a warm meal. The reactions were mixed. Some agreed most enthusiastically, while others were outraged. Often I would hear things like, It's their own fault they live in misfortune. Or, If they would actually work, they wouldn't starve. Such people make me furious. What cursed ignorance is this? Of course it's easy for them to see the sky atop their ivory towers, but they'll never understand the plight of the poor. Despite how angry this letter may seem, I'm quite content overall. I'm starting to feel as if I have a purpose, that I'm moving in the right direction. And my happiness is due in no small part to the woman who always stayed by my side throughout all these years. It's strange. I know you'll probably never read these pages, just as I might never see one of your letters, but still... I have the feeling as I'm writing these words that I'm talking to you through the ink. With that in mind, I love you, Sira. Third letter. Sira is dead. Killed by a group of scoundrels as she was delivering the food for the food bank in the Undercity. How quickly these words have been written down, but how can I express this anguish, this emptiness even remotely? It sounds so absurd. I'm talking to a piece of paper because no one else wants to listen to me, nor could they even remotely understand what this means to me. Sira always told me that these letters would give me strength, but they don't. These lines appear unfamiliar to me. Everything feels wrong. I feel wrong as I get up in the morning. I feel wrong when the sun hides behind the cloudy sky at noon, and I feel wrong as I lie alone in this big bed in the evening. Malthus judges suicide to be a sin, since every one of us has a purpose in life to fulfill. But could this really be my purpose? I might have thirty winters left at most, depending on whether or not an illness snatches me away. And behind me I can see nothing but failed dreams. Our damned food bank bill has led to downright wars at the banquets of the Undercity, the rich trying to weasel their way out of making payments as much as they can. And in front of me I see nothing but fog. It seems most fitting. So tell me, Malthus, is this really my path? Is this my purpose? To be a failure whose fate it is to die alone? My, my thoughts are chaotic and I'm tired. I don't want to keep writing. Books of Enderal Euro's Memorial Book My beloved Sira, this is my final letter to you and I'm writing to ask you for your forgiveness. Forgiveness for murdering you, because that's what I've done. I can very well imagine how you would react to this if you were still alive. You'd smile, shake your head, and tell me this is one of my moments when I tend to blow everything out of proportion. But as much as I'd like to believe that, you'd be mistaken. 
No, it wasn't me who ended your life, but I still bear the responsibility. For it was I who let it come this far. Why? Because I was the one who deceived you. I was the one who told you those ridiculous tales of heroes and idealists. It was I who told you that only cowards give up. And it was I who infected you with all these ideas of mine, which were no more than foolish illusions. I see it now clearer than ever. But I didn't back then, because I made a mistake. The mistake of thinking that this world wants to be saved. Sounds trite, doesn't it? But the more you think about it, the more apparent it becomes. It doesn't. It never did, and never deserved it anyway. And yes, I can imagine what you say to that, too. That I become what I've always loathed. But, Sarah, just look around. Look around and confront reality. Confront the world we live in. Look at how much we have and how little we appreciate it. Look at how we could work together, but we fight wars instead. Look at how we could choose love, but instead choose hatred. It's never been different, Sarah. And no, there's no hope. No matter how much we tell ourselves there is, and... It hurts me to write this, it really does, but... It's the truth. Plain and simple. And I'm tired of clouding my mind with all these lies we tell ourselves again and again just to avoid confronting the obvious. Mankind is at its end. A Kiranian philosopher once wrote that there's a point in our lives when we make a choice. The choice to either live valiantly, but in austerity, or to live corruptly, but in pleasure. The latter is what this philosopher calls choosing the void. Do you see where I'm going, Sarah? All of them, all these numb-headed fools around us choose the void. We were among the few who didn't, among the few who dreamed of something more and who were willing to sacrifice for it. We might have even succeeded if we hadn't been alone. But we were, Sarah, we were alone. And now they all talk of a red madness that infects our minds. Madness? It's so simple, don't you see it? They realize what they have chosen. They realize that their lives are devoid of sense, of purpose, and they can no longer look away from the truth, that they in their ignorance and cowardice shaped a world with nothing in it worth living for. And no, I do not say this lightly. You should know this better than anyone else. I wanted to believe it. I wanted to believe that there's a way, that we only had to try hard enough. But what I see here, your withered body, shows me that all of our plans were doomed from the start. We should have fled. We should have went to some remote island to grow old together. But we didn't. And now I'm here with your blood on my hands, all because I infected you with my folly. I'll go, Sira. I don't know whether something awaits me after death or whether it's just darkness. And to be honest, I don't care. But before I go, I'll give this world what it deserves. Do you remember what I wrote? They had the choice between virtue and void, and they choose the latter. They shall have it.